Sometimes when I work with middle leaders, I say, what do you lead? What are you a leader of? And they often say key stage two, or literacy, or numeracy, or PSHE. And with a bit of shoving and pushing, they eventually say, the people <laughs> that work in literacy, <laughs> numeracy, key stage two, nursery, foundation. Leaders lead people. And the curriculum and the content and the quality and the focus and the resources flow from that. And I get a feeling that there's a lot of that being forgotten at times in that leadership role. Of course they have to lead the what the team of people are working with or trying to achieve, but they do that through the team of people. Those are the things we know middle leaders do, but I'd like us to push forward to make sure we can help and support middle leaders to go a bit further and to take the next step. Um, and I'd like us to see middle leaders as those absolute catalysts of change. Not the people who carry out the change that has been decided, but the people who influence, stimulate, shape, forge, drive and support those change by others, by the teams that they lead. A middle leader does not bring about change on their own. You can't do it on your own. You can only do it through and with others. In the work I've been doing over the last eight or nine years in London um, and nationally, I've been very focused on something that exercised me greatly as, as the head of a secondary school. I'd get asked all the time, what's your evidence of that? Um, and the more I worked on that, the more I realised as a system, we didn't have a clue how to do that. We have lots of things we do that tell us we're doing that, but I don't think they're really evidencing the kind of catalytic change that we're wanting to explore. And as a result of a lot of the work I've done, um, with working with schools to help develop this, we're very clear on the importance of these three questions. And we would want middle leaders to be able to answer these questions as an intrinsic part of their job. But to answer those questions in a deeper way than maybe is the superficial answers that we tend to get at the moment. So what is the actual difference you and your team want to make? If we're talking about bringing about transformational change, well, what is that difference that you want to make? When I ask that question, I often get an answer. I'm sure I wouldn't get it from your schools. But I often get the answer, improve key stage one results. Improve literacy. Now, of course, middle leaders and senior leaders want that to happen. But I don't think that's the difference that I'm trying to get at. I think that is the, that's what will happen if we can take a step back and say, what's the difference we're trying to make so that key stage one results improve? Numeracy improves. I think those end outcomes are a kind of measure of the difference we're trying to make. And unless we actually have a really deep understanding and a shared understanding of what's the difference in the classroom we need to make so that we can evidence it in that way, then we're never going to be wholly sure 
of what it is we need to do to bring about that change. You have to know what the current practice in the classroom is. Teacher practice, children's learning. And you have to be able to describe that in an objective way. If you bring that team of people together to share the practice they've seen, and it doesn't have to be the whole lesson, it could be the beginning of the lesson, the end of the lesson, the way a new topic is introduced, whatever the focus you think needs exploring. If we share that practice with each other, we start that dialogue in a neutral, developmental way. You've got a rigorous description of what it is now. <coughs> then together as a group, you can describe what you want it to look like. What is the difference you want to make to that as a team? And you know, it's not rocket science. It's as simple as from what now to what by when. And if we could really get into a tight structure of those are the kind of conversations backed up by the evidence in the classroom as to what it looks like and where you want it to be, you can bring about incremental and transformational change. The way we develop teacher practice should have a focus about improving it, not proving that you've done it. Should be about leading improvements to the learning of the children, which can only come about if teachers improve their learning about their practice. And then it enables you to evidence the impact of the work you've made. And we really tested this approach out um, in a research and development project with a very large group of schools that belong to a membership group in England called Challenge Partners. But that led to the creation of what we felt was a better learning and development process for improving practice of teachers in the classroom and developing great teachers and teaching. So how do you find time to create that process where well, you've got to stop doing things that aren't doing what you want them to because you've only got the time you've got. It's the only answer there is. And that might be about being brave. You've then got to have in the team with the teachers a research-informed learning conversation. What's the baseline in your classrooms? What are the goals? Where do you want to get it to? What are the strategies, the actions that you'll take? You only know the strategies when you know where you want to go. You've got to experiment and you've got to have time. And then you've got to have check-in conversations. Did that work? Did it work for you? What worked? What didn't work for you? Somebody says, this didn't work for me, I couldn't figure this out. And somebody else says, I figured that out, try this. And you've got to play with that. And that takes lots of your meetings. And then people start saying, well, can I come and have a look at how you do do that? Because I can't get the hang of that. And they're asking to visit lessons. It's not a, this is how thou shalt learn. Go and see this person. And they're saying, oh, come and have a look. See what you think. See if I've got it. If you've got the right culture and the right conversations. They're inviting people into that space not being annoyed that they're coming in and they have to create something just for that. You refine the approaches, you adapt practice, you start the conversations about the evidence as to whether the shift in practice is making a difference to the learning of the children. Because if it doesn't do that, there's no point. Professional learning and development is about the difference it makes for children. But you have to make a difference for teachers first. 